2016. Good morning, and uh, I'm blessed, blessed and honored to be here. So, um, let let me read what what I have from uh, Frida Berrigan. I am sorry I am not here with you. I am grateful that you honor and remember Daniel Berrigan. I was asked to share a few thoughts with you to be read today, and here it is. Dan liked toothpicks. <laughs> After lunch at his apartment on 98th Street, he pushed back his chair and fish out a toothpick from his pocket. Then he'd chew on it meditatively as we chatted. When it was time to kiss him goodbye, He'd make this little frog motion and the toothpick would disappear into his mouth as his lips gazed, grazed my cheek. It is one of those potent and unique memories that I return to again and again because it makes me smile. And I feel my uncle close even though he is now six years gone from us. This toothpick moment repeated so many times through our long connection is so strong that I can almost conjure him back here based on it and how wonderful it would be to have him in our midst again. But his words are still here, and they are still relevant as ever. Take this, for instance, written in May 1992 in U.S. Catholic. Let it be said plainly, war cancels faith. War is the greatest exercise in practical, lethal, and inevitably linguistic atheism. He wrote those words in the aftermath of the devastating U.S. invasion of Iraq in 1991, and as U.S. imposed sanctions starved and sickened civilians. I think half a million children and civilians died just from the sanctions alone. Dan opposed war, all war because he understood the corrosive impact of war on people, on politics, on the economy, on the institutional church, on language itself. Later in the same article he writes, no winners, only losers. The losers are slaughtered and the winners are brutalized. Thirty years later these words still ring so true. Today we have the continuing Russian invasion of Ukraine, the United States bombing against Syria and assassination strikes in Afghanistan, and the investment of billions, and I dare say it's trillions, billions of dollars that we do not have in new nuclear weapons and submarines and on and on. So if war cancels faith, as Dan asserted, what does it mean to be a person of faith? It means opposing war, valuing and celebrating and protecting all that war threatens. How? With liturgy, with prayer, with nonviolent resistance, with community. Gatherings like this one help us remember to do that. We remember our faith. We practice it together, and we strengthen our connections to one another and the taproot of our faith traditions. Dan concludes that article by writing, Topple the idols, disarm Christian soldiers. Christian soldiers does sound like an oxymoron, doesn't it? <laughs> and I can hear his voice saying these words and I'll almost see him smile, a jaunty toothpick peeking <laughs> out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This, was, this was a gift from John Amidon, and I've been honored to carry it in Saratoga Springs, New York City, and Washington, D.C. How many must die before our voices are heard? How many must be tortured, dislocated, starved, maddened? How long must the world's resources be raped in the service of legalized murder? When, at what point, will you no say no to this war or any war?